Walking in faith is necessary to prepare for Jesus' return. What are we doing to prepare for his return? Today's key verse reads, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Revelation chapter 22, verse 13. In the Old and New Testaments, there are two full apocalypses in Daniel and Revelation, both of which speak cryptically of corrupt human political realms in contrast to God's heavenly and eternal realm. The context of the last chapter of the last book of Scripture brings a close to human history. Like ultimate book ends of humanity's story, our beginning and end are contrasted and captured by authors Moses and John. In Genesis, the serpent tempts the first Adam, he falls, and paradise is lost. In Revelation, the serpent is destroyed, the second Adam is victorious, and paradise is restored. The significant elements of the garden paradise were two people, the tree of life, and a river that watered the garden. In the New Jerusalem, the fountain of life flows from the throne of God, and lining both sides of the river are many trees of life that are not only freely accessible, but ever fruitful for the enjoyment and healing of many nations. In Eden, one tree was forbidden. In the New Jerusalem, nothing is forbidden. This succinct picture of our final paradise supersedes the original, particularly because of the absence of temptation, death, and evil. Although quickly is the standard interpretation of the Greek takus, the more literal rendering is suddenly. Both intend for the church, the bride of Christ, to prepare herself and be ready at any time for the return of her beloved bridegroom. This is because no one really knows when it will happen. The main point repeated over and over in scripture is to be ready for Christ's return whenever it happens. It is misguided thinking though, to take this verse out of context and try to say that we are justified by our works. Too many other scriptures clarify this issue. However, passages such as Matthew 16, James 2, and Revelation 22 also remind us that we can't expect to get away with corrupt behavior. The positive take on the verse is that Jesus will come with rewards, like wages or payment, for services for those who have been faithful. If Genesis and Revelation are the bookends of human history, Jesus is the holder of the bookends, both pre-existing and post-existing are temporal time frame. This is true not only in the sense of existence, but also in character and holiness, without beginning or end, and without change. Alpha and Omega, moreover, is one of many self-proclaimed images of Christ found in Scripture. The same names are applied to God, and here specifically applied to Christ, giving another insurmountable argument for his deity. Jesus gives his blessing to those who obey God's commandments, this is their qualification for entering the gates of the heavenly city, the New Jerusalem. These people have a right or authority to eat from the tree of life. Adam and Eve were banished from the garden, and they were not able to eat from its tree. Now, the tree is available to all who follow Jesus and obey God's commandments. The people outside the city are those who do not keep God's commandments, since the whole city is God's temple, then those who would defile it are kept outside. These people have disobeyed God to the point that their disobedience has become their identity. Christ's parting words are filled with mercy and hope. When Jesus ascended after his resurrection, he promised to be with his disciples by his spirit. Now he promises he will soon return. His coming will be fulfilled as completely as the fulfillment of sending the Holy Spirit, the comforter and teacher of the church. Christ came to bring us grace. When his work on earth was finished, he left to prepare a place for us, and as surely as he first came according to his promise, he will return, as promised, for his bride. Until we are perfected in him, we can find no better comfort, stronger peace, or more enduring hope than the presence of his grace to sustain us until his return. Here's our lesson. Although Jesus graciously extends the invitation for us to enter the kingdom and offers waters of life, we can't receive these gifts without encouragement and mutual accountability. Heavenly Father, fill our hearts with what we truly desire, for who we truly seek is you.